The chopper is just one of the vehicles I regularly use in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It has been through multiple iterations to eventually arrive at this quote unquote final form. Figuring out how to take advantage of these motors and propellers to practically fly around and accomplish tasks took time, testing, and researching on the internet and with the game. As I started playing around with these motors, I became determined to create a flying machine that would meet the following criteria. Number one, every motor used in the final product must run off a single shock emitter. Number two, this machine must be maneuverable in the air and there must be a repeatable landing procedure. It must ascend easily and at a satisfactory speed at the user's discretion. Number three, it must inflict the maximum amount of damage to a single target or a group of enemies, while leveraging the other two factors as much as possible. Starting with the first point, the main idea is to use just one shock emitter to power multiple motors for transportation with minimum battery usage. The shock emitter is the only device that is drawing power to make the entire vehicle move. It uses less energy than the draw needed for two Zonai fans on an ordinary hoverbike. While you can arm a hoverbike with this number of weapons, it won't fly due to the extra weight. It will require more fans to fly, putting more strain on your battery life. The motors and propellers, on the other hand, offer an enormous amount of lift for no extra battery life, as they all run off a single shock emitter. With the extra lift and energy savings, you can dedicate more parts towards weaponry on the vehicle. As a bonus, the propellers, motors, pipes, and railings do not expire over time. The shock emitter, construct head, and beam emitter are the only parts that expire, lessening the strain on your inventory than builds that use multiple Zonai fans for lift. For the second piece of criteria, there was a significant hurdle I had to overcome when using these motors and propellers for a flying machine. As soon as the motors and propellers push the vehicle up, it's going to want to flip over. When you add a stabilizer to solve this, you end up with a machine that does nothing but endlessly ascend and becomes uncontrollable. Looking at the hover bike, it doesn't need a stabilizer. The weight of the vehicle just needs to be balanced correctly. This led me to a kind of seesaw design, with Link at the back, the motor assembly in the middle, and the weapons at the front. Importantly, two metal poles connect the motors to the shock emitter and weigh the vehicle so it's more front heavy. Now, as Link pushes forward on the control stick, the nose of the chopper goes down, the propellers tilt up slightly, as noted by the updraft, which causes the vehicle to descend. Neutral stick, the chopper naturally moves forward and lists to the left. While this listing makes for an overall slower right turn, the resulting tighter left turn while nose down miraculously causes a spiral descent. We have a landing pattern. With this, you can circle around areas such as light routes, shrines, and bokoblin camps before easily landing near them. Carefully pulling back on the control stick will cause the vehicle to ascend without moving forward horizontally very much. You can get to extremely high places while using very little battery life. You can easily go from the surface to a sky island doing this. That leads me to my third and final factor, which is taking advantage of all this extra lift and battery life to add the maximum amount of firepower to the chopper. For this part, I ended up going with a standard construct head and kept attaching beam emitters until I reached the parts limit. The weaponry contributes to the vehicle's overall weight distribution, with 30% near the back and 70% towards the front. This is enough emitters concentrated continuously to deal with groups of various kinds of enemies. Usually, the chopper just needs to show up to an enemy camp to decimate everyone in it. If while raining death from above you pass over an enemy camp entirely, you can use recall to rewind the chopper's movement and potentially land the vehicle or simply repeat the process. That or you can just plan to tightly turn left around the camp while the lasers do their work. Admittedly, this vehicle can have a tough time fighting certain bosses and enemies that don't take damage from beam emitters. You can substitute beam emitters for cannons as you go, it will just cost extra battery life. That said, you can use any weapons. That is my theory behind the chopper. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn how to build the chopper, I will have a build guide coming out shortly. Subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my uploads. Let me know your thoughts about the chopper in the comments below. Alright everyone, thanks so much and have a great day.